The Battle of Dresden was fought on 26-27 August 1813 around Dresden, Germany, resulting in a French victory under Napoleon against forces of the Sixth Coalition of Austrians, Russians and Prussians under Field Marshal Schwarzenberg. However, Napoleon's victory was not as complete as it could have been. Substantial pursuit was not undertaken after the battle, and the flanking corps was surrounded and forced to surrender a few days later at the Battle of Kulm. Prelude On 16 August, Napoleon had sent Marshal St. Cyr's corps to fortify and hold Dresden in order to hinder Allied movements and to serve as a possible base for his own maneuvers. He planned to strike against the interior lines of his enemies and defeat them in detail before they could combine their full strength. He had some 300,000 men 800 cannons against Allied forces totaling over 450,000 and 1,200 cannons. But the coalition avoided battle with Napoleon himself, choosing to attack his subordinate commanders instead. On 23 August, at the Battle of Grossbeeren, south of Berlin, Crown Prince Charles of Sweden defeated his old comrade Marshal Audinote. And on 26 August, Prussian Marshal Blücher defeated Marshal MacDonald at the Katzbach. Battle. On the same day as Katzbach, Karl Philipp I zu Schwarzenberg. The commander of the Austrian force of over 200,000 men of the Austrian army of Bohemia and accompanied by Francis II, Alexander I, and Frederick William III, attacked St. Cyr. In Dresden, French infantry manned the various redoubts and defensive positions. They hoped to last long enough for reinforcements to arrive. Sure enough, they got their wish. Napoleon arrived quickly and unexpectedly with reinforcements to repel this assault on the city. French counterattacks on the Great Garden in the southeast and on the Allied center were successful, and by nightfall the French had regained almost all of St. Cyr's original positions. Although outnumbered 3-2, Napoleon attacked the following morning, turned the Allied left flank, and won an impressive tactical victory. The flooded Vichyritz cut the left wing of the Allied army, commanded by Johann von Klenor and Ignaz Galilei, from the main body. Marshal Joachim Murat took advantage of this isolation and inflicted heavy losses on the Austrians. A French participant observed Murat cut off from the Austrian army Clanor's corps, hurling himself upon it at the head of the Carabiniers and Cuirassiers. Nearly all his Clanor's battalions were compelled to lay down their arms, and two other divisions of infantry shared their fate of Clanor's force, Lieutenant Field Marshal Joseph. Baron von Mesco de Felsa Cubanis division of five infantry regiments was surrounded and captured by Murat's cavalry which amounted to approximately 13,000 men and 15 colors. Galilei's divisions also suffered serious losses when they were attacked by Murat's cavalry during a rainstorm. With damp flints and powder, their muskets would not fire and many battalions became an easy prey to the French cuirassiers and dragoons. Then suddenly, Napoleon had to leave the field by virtue of a sudden fit of gastric spasma and the failure to follow up on his success allowed Schwarzenberg to withdraw and narrowly escape encirclement. The coalition had lost some 38,000 men and 40 guns. French casualties totaled around 10,000. Some of Napoleon's officers noted he was suffering from a violent colic, which had been brought on by the cold rain, to which he had been exposed during the whole of the battle. Aftermath On 27 August, General Van Damme received orders to advance on Pirna and bridge the Elbe there. This was accomplished in a pouring rain, without disturbing the Russians drawn up on the heights of Zihista. This advance by Van Damme resulted in the Battle of Kulm three days later. Interestingly Napoleon's old rival Jean-Victor Marie Moreau who had only recently returned from his banishment from the United States was talking to the Tsar and was mortally wounded in the battle and died later on 2 September in Launay. Hoffman, the author and composer E. 
T.A. Hoffman happened to be in Dresden during the battle, being at the time employed by a locally based orchestra. On the 22nd of August, after the end of the armistice, the Hoffman family was forced to relocate from their pleasant house in the suburbs into the town. During the next few days, as the battle raged, they experienced the ongoing bombardments. As Hoffman later recounted, many people were killed by bombs directly in front of him. After the main battle was over, he visited the gory battlefield. His account can be found in Vision of dem Schlechtfeld B.E.I. Dresden.